about probabilistic reasoning how do you do probabilistic reasoning by understanding conditioning so sometimes if you are trying to solve a problem directly that based on directly means uh, based on definition of probability measure what we had already discussed okay so based on that uh, uh, that one is the direct approach so direct approach always happens to be uh, what you have to be very much attentive in nature then you will be able to solve that problem and uh, if you are willing to make it more a smart uh, move in order to bring some extra reasoning kind of things you have to come up with conditioning approach conditioning is uh, really one interesting approach in order to solve problem in a very smart way and more reasoning way and later you will come to know that uh, conditioning is providing uh, one criteria that via wedge rule there we will see that uh, the prior belief what we are taking actually that might be uh, not a correct one initial one initial belief if uh, suppose you are you don't know about any shoot like i am a ci i talk i talked you don't have any idea about that then some kind of belief you may say that it is a mathematical issue, something like that so if that is the situation then that would be your prior belief now once some data you will have regarding the shoot and some likelihood information that likelihood things you will have regarding the shoot then your probability or the, your information will be updated updated and you will have a better uh, if you you are uh, giving attention to the word carefully then simply institute of mathematical sciences that means it is talking about mathematics research not just academic things research so then uh, your your prior belief happens to be right and rightly it will be updated with the help of further information if you are collecting the right way so that situation is there and if someone is saying that okay uh, it, it is uh, an institute in india it will be not uh, a good as uh, uh, mit if that belief you are uh, having then you will say that no 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 we are taking our prior is not a good prior that one is a research institute domain of the institute is res.ac.in re so and here if you talk about iits and triple iits and it they are having domain name ac.in that means academic institute these are academic institute these are not especially meant for research activities these are meant for academic activities so here teaching is more important than research and if you go tfr or uh, imsc there uh, research is more important research everything is research there and uh, if you go in isc isc indian institute of science that one is also academic institute ac dot in you will see domain so not all institute are getting res dot in okay so that uh, by seeing the uh, domain you can come up with some kind of prior distribution some kind of prior information and now later you will collect more information then you will update your prior belief prior information and that updated belief we call it posterior information and that uh, things is coming through conditioning that conditioning you will see it so uh, till now we had seen the definition of uh, uh, probability of an uh, event so simply it was uh, it was defined as uh, by a probability measure it was defined as p of a okay and p was a probability measure that means where i am not giving a formula here it is not there is no never a formula only when your sample space is a finite set finite set then you will be able to come up with formula that would be the concluding mark you can't go further okay and here simply you will say that probability measure p it is a mapping from collection of all possible events i am not talking about all possible subset we had in the last class we had seen that if you are a, taking a set with n element the how many possible subset would be there in that set 2 to the power n okay but uh, those are total possible subset i am not talking about total possible subset that we call it total collection of all possible subset we call it power set we are talking about collection of all possible event and what is difference between event and subset event is always characterized by a statement a statement must be there and uh, the collection of all event we call it sigma algebra okay i am i am not going in 
uh, abstract mathematics definition i am just writing in very layman way i am saying that probability measure it is a function from sigma algebra of omega to close interval 0 1 simply and it satisfy certain properties those are probability of sample as uh, sample space is 1 probability of null set is 5 that means if there is no outcome then what is the probability zero impossible kind of things and probability if you have you consider all possible outcomes then probability would be one have you watched this movie solely tell me the possibilities of uh, uh, outcome when uh, what amitabh bachchan had the j had what both side it was same both sides so both then second so certain sample a space was simple single set single run set uh, then you if you are taking in a proper event the probability of proper event it falls between 0 and 1 if you take a proper event probability of proper event it falls between uh, 0 and 1 that means it is taking value in the open interval uh, 0 to 1 0 to 1 when I was doing PhD from IIT Mandi uh, actually there was one German student he was doing bachelor program from German University so he came IIT Mandi for just exchange program something like that when I ask in next semester what courses you are going to take, he was very much clear that these courses he is going to take. So they are having always uh, what they will take. So uh, in Hindi there is a uh, uh, idiom that uh, Agra Sochi Sada Sukhi. Have you heard? Actually it is in Sanskrit I think. Hindi, Agra Sochi Sada Sukhi something like that. If you are thinking ahead, then definitely you will be in the right direction. You won't face much problem. And you should always uh, need to know what courses you are going to uh, study. So here I am saying that pro uh, third property, we call it summability property. Uh, property. And here sum uh, summability say that if you are taking two events, A and B, and both are mutually disjoint, then how you will get property of uh, A union B? By summing it the third property. So these are the helping to compute probability of an event. So all these we had already seen that. Now I am talking about the conditioning scenario. Here A intersection B having no any uh, common outcome. A intersection B is 5. It is equal to 5. So several times I am again repeating it. Okay. So because this one is the backbone, so I am again repeating it. So I am talking about conditional prob probability and when such scenario is coming. So uh, actually conditional probability is coming through conditioning statement or you can call it partial information. That means if you are having a random experiment and you are willing to compute probability of an event, then complete information will be not given to you. You will have partial information that partial information you are calling it conditioning information or conditioning. So suppose that we know that outcome is within some given event, okay, B, Give some given event B and B is not complete information about the sample space, B is just partial information of the experiment, random experiment. Now we wish to uh, quantify likelihood of the occurrence of A, event A. Once we are having information about B, then we are trying to compute probability of occurrence of A from this scenario of B. So our, we will not focus back to sample of space, we will compute probability of A from this scenario of B, the given situation. So that given situation we call it conditioning statement or conditioning information. So we will compute probability of A given B, we say that probability of uh, probability of A given B, that means pro we are computing how much A is happening within B, 
how much A is happening within B. That is the scenario. Okay. So thus we construct a new probability law. Okay. So that the conditioning probability of an event E is uh, event A we uh, given event B with and B is saying that B is having positive probability. What does it mean? Definitely B will occur. If B is having probability zero, that means impossible to occur. B is having uh, probability greater than zero, less than one, less than one greater than zero. So that means B definitely it is a definite kind of uh, event that will occur. That is all be occurred. So then we are computing probability of A given B. How we are saying that? How much A is happening within B? Okay, and we normalize by the probability of A because our new universe is not omega, simple space omega. Our new universe is B. So we try to compute probability of A from the scenario of B. That is, that, what does it mean? It is pro, pro, joint occurrence of probability of A and B. How much A is happening within B? How much A is happening within B? So that the probability of how much A is happening within B normalized by probability of B. So this we call it conditional probability. So this is the actual definition of conditional probability. Everywhere this will come. Everywhere. Okay. So if you talk about uh, uh, sample space where you are having finite uh, outcomes in that case you can get a formula like uh, probability of a given b it would be number of outcome jointly in a and b divided by number of outcome outcome within b so that simple if when sample space is finite if sample space is finite by default every event would be finite whatever event you will define in the sample as finite for sample space it would be uh, finite so that's with then you can put num numeric things and then you can apply all those principle of counting things what we had already discussed so two event a and b are independent further we will come to know uh, if uh, uh, happening of b first is not affecting the happening of a what does it mean this one is prior probability of a probability of a without worrying about b Second one is probability of A once we have already seen uh, B. So if we observe that the uh, prior probability is just equal to conditional probability, then we say that happening of P is not affecting the happening of A. What does it mean? A and B are independent. So later we will see again definition. Now again I had discussed a mutually exclusive uh, event. What is meaning of mutually exclusive event? When two event doesn't occur to the together exclude happening of one exclude the happening of other so that means probability of joint occurrence of a and b is zero then we say that a and b are mutually exclusive and when we will say that two event would be mutually disjoint when there is no common outcome between those two so so mutually disjoint implies mutually exclusive so actually you can say that it is first definition in the in the lecture where I had asked a question that what is the difference between uh, what is mutually exclusive, what is mutually disjoint, few had uh, mentioned that independent, they had come up with independent. Independency is totally different. We are defined, when we define independency, when we are having conditioning, conditioning kind of thing, then we are defined, uh, we are defining independent, independent kind of situation. Okay. So first one is coming mutually disjoint, then mutually exclusive, then mutually independent. All three are different. Okay, all three are different. Uh, definitely, in some sort or many sort. So I will take few examples. Uh, three successive coins toss three successive coin in together. So here we don't bother about computing sample space. So we toss a fair coin three times. We wish to find probability of A given B, where A, A and B are defined as like this way. A is talking about more heads than tails. B is talking about uh, first toss is head. So more heads than tail. What are the outcome? More heads than tail. That means head, head, head. First would be head, head, head. Then head, head, tail. Then head, head, tail, then 
then head tail head then then what will come tail head head these are the possible four possible outcome that one is in a okay uh, now if you are talking about first toss is head in if you are talking about b in b what kind of outcome will be there so it would be first head 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 then head head then okay head tail head then then head tail tail any other option any other option no these are the possible oh, outcomes so this one is b so we are willing to compute probability of a given b so what is the probability of a given b ha what is your idea to compute probability of a given b what is so you have to see how much a is happening within b how much a is happening within b out of uh, uh, total outcome of uh, uh, b how much of r in a how much of r in a how many are there three so simply what will what will be conditional probability three a given b it would be three by four that means out of four outcome of b three are there in a so simply the conditional probability would be 3 by 4 you don't have to go up to sample space so in conditioning as much as avoid sample space you don't have to bring sample space here just solve the problem from the event perspective here someone is willing to compute probability of b given a what would be situation here if i am asking you to compute probability of b given a what would be probability of b given a so out of four outcome of a how many is are there happening in b how many of there are happening in b 3 so again this would also come 3 by 4 so that is the scenario that means you have to see a and b only you don't have to bother about the complete sample space so that is the way to compute conditioning uh, conditional probability okay you have to develop that idea not like just go through definition of the conditional probability like uh, computing number of element in a uh, uh, that computing probability of a intersection b then computing probability of b a individually when you are computing probability of a intersection b what does it mean you are computing prior probability of joint occurrence of uh, joint occurrence of a and b prior probability that means you have to considering sample space there if you are considering you are, if you are computing probability of b that means you are computing probability with respect to sample space So when simply i would like to say that when you are introducing conditioning just forget sample space see the current scenario what are given to you and from there try to compute so it is something more than what we had discussed in probability measure the same thing actually i have explained it here in systematic way you can see it all this so i have written sample space there but there is no uh, no requirement of computing sample space here there is no requirement of computing sample space okay so just look for a and b even uh, see the common element you can see it like this way so what would be the uh, if you are computing probability of a you can see verify it is just a karke uh, but you don't need to compute all these you don't need to compute all these directly uh, you don't need to compute all these are prior probabilities all these are probability directly what you will compute probability of a given b how much of a is happening within b out of four outcome of uh, b three are happening in a occurring in a so that's why probability of a given b would be 3 by 4 so that 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 is the approach
now there is other example so this example we had already discussed now i will talk another example so we are having a, a conservative design team we call it c and we are having another innovative design design team that one is innovative uh, design team we call it n okay are asked to separately design a new product within a month there are two team and both team had uh, have been asked to design a new product within a month so from past experience we know this information these are the partial information what information i am going to provide you that these are the, what are the information the probability that team c is successful is 2 by 3 probability that team n is successful is 1 by 2 the probability that at least one of the team is successful is 3 by 4 these are the partial information what we are having okay suppose what is the question suppose if both teams are successful then the design of team n is adopted if both team are successful then design of team n will be adopted assume that exactly one successful design is produced what is the probability that it was designed by team n assume that at um, exactly one team is successful what is the probability that it is designed by team n that we have to compute so your question will be here what kind of outcome we will have in this question any any idea what kind of outcome we will have because we have to see the pattern of outcome here okay so in order to solve this problem we have to define outcome what are the possible outcome so there are two team it is talking about failure and success of two team success success of two team uh, uh, then uh, success and failure and failure and failure there are two team now so these are the possible outcome we can say that okay ss that means both team succeed sf that means team c succeed and team n fails F, uh, fs team c fails and team n succeeds ff that means both team fails these are the four possible outcome in this problem these are the four possible outcome now we will numerically convert this given information into probability okay so if you talk about uh, the one that e, this one it is saying that uh, it is in the probability that team c is successful when we say team c is successful in this scenario in this scenario first word is s the first letter is s so he is talking about success, uh, success of c so here that means uh, if you term this uh, a statement this is given a statement as a1 what is probability of a1 probability of a1 is 2 by 3 and a1 include two outcome ss and sf both both are mutually exclusive okay so sum of probability of ss and sf it is equal to 2 by 3 now if second condition is talking about the probability that team n is successful when you observe team n is successful when team n is successful you diagonally observe okay when you diagonally observe then team n will be successful so that's that uh, this event call it a2 okay so probability of a2 is what 1 by 2 that means a2 contains ss and fs so that's why we write probability of ss plus probability of fs it is equal to 1 by 2 a third condition is saying that the probability that at least one team is successful at least one team is successful what does it mean both can be successful, both can be, uh, successful. one of them can be successful so it is coming like this way it is considering the scenario of like this way okay so that means that event we call it a3 call it a3 okay what is the probability of a3 sorry this this is the a3 what is the probability of a3 3 by 4 this 3 by 4 a3 contains ss sf fs 
so probability of ss plus probability of sf plus probability of fs it is equal to 3 by 4 and this sample space contains these four possible outcome so we know the probability of sample space is equal to 1 that means probability of ss plus probability of sf plus probability of fs probability plus probability of ff it is equal to 1 so how many equations we are having one equation call it two equations equation two this one is equation three and how many unknown we are having that means probability of how many outcomes we are having how many outcome we are having in this situation four outcomes we are having and four equations we are having so easily we can solve this equation and we will get probability of these four outcomes we can solve this we are having four equation and four unknown so solve this and you will get probability of the corresponding outcome probability of ss it is 5 by 12 probability of sf it is 1 by 4 probability of ps it is 1 by 12 probability of ff it is 1 by 4 by solving those four equations we got this uh, got this okay so our partial information in order to compute the desired probability is what given partial inform information is exactly one team one uh, exactly one successful design is produced when you are seeing exactly one successful design when fs fs or sf that is the situation so you call it event b that one is containing uh, what sf or fs this week it, it contain sf and fs and what probability you are willing to compute probability that it was designed by team n designed by team n means fs you are talking about uh, denoted by a call it this one uh, designed by team n call it a okay so under this that means how much a is happening within b that we have to compute it so how will compute it so you will compute probability of a given b probability of a intersection b okay divided by probability of b so it would be actually this ratio will come here a probability of uh, a intersection b that means what is a intersection b what is a intersection b it is fs what is the probability of fs 1 by 12 Probability of FS is 1 by 12. We have computed it. That means it is 1 by 12. Okay. Uh, what is probability of uh, B? It is probability of SF plus probability of FS. That one is what? 1 by 4 plus 1 by 12. And simplify it, you will get the solution. And the solution is 1 by 4. Probability of A given B is 1 by 4. This is the probability. That means 25 percent chance that uh, the uh, design it is denied, the, the product is denied, it is designated by team N. 25 percent chance. So solution you can see it here. Okay. Now I will talk about next uh, application of conditional probability. So once you are having understanding of conditional probability, any issue regarding conditional probability till now? What do you understand that conditional probability? Yeah, another uh, some partial information or conditioning situation is given there. Uh, yeah. Some conditioning situation, conditioning information, or conditioning uh, call it uh, uh, a statement or you call it uh, prior information those things are given then from that sc scenario you are trying to compute probability of any event so that uh, that time conditioning thing conditional probability is coming here once you are having idea of conditional probability then we will talk about application of conditional probability the first application it is coming in the multiplication rule multiplication rule that means uh, multiplication rule it is coming in order to compute joint probability of occurrence of two event and uh, actually it is just re-statement of the definition of conditional probability. Re-statement. How? 
we'll see it here. So in the definition of conditional probability, we see an event A as our event of interest. We are okay. While event B represents the event as our prior information to comprise as a new sample of space. We never bother about the true sample of space. We try to compute probability of A from the scenario of B. So our new inverse, new sample of space is B actually. From the scenario of B, we are computing probability of A when we say conditional probability. Okay. So that's way if you are talking about what is the probability of B given B. What is the probability of B given B? It is 1. B is given to you. That means you, uh, you have seen all possible outcome there in B. That the probability of B given B, it would be always 1. So that's way. Uh, uh, what is the probability of a sample space? 1. So it is in the conditioning scenario, probability of B is 1. So B is acting as a, our new sample space. New sample space. It is not true sample space, it is new sample space. Okay. So conditioning probability doesn't address the reason for prior information, only how to accommodate it into probability framework to compute updated probability of an um, event A under the given scenario B. Okay. So you can claim that the conditional probability, probability of A given B, it also satisfies all the exams of probability measures. What are the exam? Probability of null set is what? Zero. Then here we have to compute probability of null set given B. B is our given scenario, now, our new sample of space. So what is the probability of phi given B? It would be probability of phi intersection B divided by probability of B. And what, what is uh, intersection of phi with B? It is phi. A probability, that probability would be zero. Zero by uh, non-zero things is always zero. Now next, probability of uh, Sample of space given B would be what? Uh, probability of uh, uh, intersection of sample of space with B. What is the intersection of sample of space with B? It, is, it would be B. So probability of B divided by B is 1. So again, it is satisfying the first exams of probability measure. Very fine. The second exam is what? If you are willing to compute probability of a proper event, probability of A is one kind of event. So as per definition, it would be probability of uh, Occurrence of A within B divided by, normalized by probability of B. Normalized means we are dividing it. Okay, normal, that is the normalizing thing. And this value would be always between 0 and 1, open interval. Okay. If A is neither phi nor omega or B, then it will be between 0 and 1. Now, third property that we call it summability probability. Uh, that means if you take any two event A and C, uh, there are no common element from the scenario of B no common element from the scenario of B, then what would be this probability? It would be just equal to sum of the corresponding conditional probability. Conditional probability of A given B and conditional probability of C given B, provided that there is no common outcome between A and C from the scenario of B. It is very simple uh, set theory result. All. Okay. So we can say that the definition of conditional probability satisfies all the exams of being a probability measure. So it is a legitimate probability measure. Okay. And uh, now we are talking about restatement of uh, definition of conditional probability. So we had already seen the definition of conditional probability. It is coming probability of A given B equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. If you bring B left hand side, what you will get? What, what you will get? If you bring B left hand side, what you will get? You will get probability of B into probability of A given B and this one is equal to what? This one is equal to probability of A intersection B. What is meaning of A intersection B? joint occurrence that means a and b occurs together simultaneously both occurs together joint occurrence so that means a, a intersection b that means it is a, it is the event where a and b occurs together joint occurrence so we what we see the probability of a intersection b that means joint occurrence of a and b actually it is equal to probability of b into probability of a given b this we call it multiplication rule this is the multiplication rule 
it is multiplied why property of b is written first because b we have observed first once b you have observed afterward you are trying to compute property of a from the given scenario of b so that's why we are writing property of b into property of a given b we never say say that we have computed property of a given b first okay if b is given first that means we know what is the property of b occurrence of property of occurrence of b so that's why this one is coming first and then we multiplied it with conditional property of a given b and this one is giving our total property pro, joint property of a and b joint property of a and b intersection means end intersection is the operation of set theory and in logic you can convert it by end because that is so here this we call it multiplication rule in the scenario when you are talking about two event so if you are talking about joint occurrence of two events how will compute c1 first then c next joint means you are talking about two event occurs together so in that two event one will occur first another will later always that scenario will come there so here we say that b occurs first and then a occurs so we write uh, joint occurrence of a and b is equal to property of b into property of a given b someone will say that no why not we see for a first and we will look for b later then for that you can write it here property of a into probability of what would be the next term b given a yeah uh, once you have already seen a then you are trying to see b so that's a property of b given a this one is the right approach okay and if you are willing to generalize this multiplication rule suppose you are having n number of events and you are willing to compute uh, joint probability of those n number of events how you compute it first you will say uh, a1 then you will look for a2 given anyone uh, a1 then you will look for a3 given a1 and a2 then like that okay so joint probability of a intersection a1 intersection a2 intersection up to an how will compute it probability of a1 times probability of a2 given a1 times probability of a3 given a1 a2 likewise probability of a1 an given a1 up to n minus 1 an minus 1 so if i say what is meaning of this what is, what is meaning of pro, meaning of this one property of a1 times property of a2 given a1 it is talking about joint property of a1 and a2 it is talking about joint property of a1 and likewise if i say what is meaning of these three in together if i say what is meaning of these three in together it would be it would talk about joint probability of a1 a2 a3 that means probability of a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 and likewise you can go for uh, four case five case like that okay so this is the this is the multiplication rule what we call it and you are free to take any one in first as per your convenience you can take any one first okay so multiplication rule uh, uh, you can graphically visualize it like this way so a1 occurs first so we are computing probability of a1 after a1 in the chain you observe a2 is occurring so that's why we are computing a2 given a1 and these two in together it is giving probability of this branch is probability of uh, a1 intersection a2 like after that a3 is occurring so here we will say the probability of a3 given a1 and a2 okay and these three together is giving probability of a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 likewise it will go likewise so this one is graphical visualization so one question i am taking it here 
in order to what is mean uh, multiplication rule how you will apply here question one so in a factory there are hundred unit of a certain product okay five of which are defective hundred uh, in a factory there are hundred units of a certain product five of which are defective we pick uh, three units from the hundred unit at random that means uniform law what is the probability that none of them are defective what is the probability that none of them are defective various way you can solve again i say but we will solve it through multiplication rule how so if you are willing to apply multiplication rule we have to come up with three outcomes are there now three unit we are selecting so we have to introduce three event so call let us uh, define ai as the event that i have chosen unit is not defective okay not defective so uh, here AI is talking about I S unit is not defective. I will take value either one or two or three. Okay. Now, so none of them are defective. None of them, none of them are de defective. What does it mean? We are talking about joint occurrence of A1, A2, and A3. That means intersection of A1, A2, A3. So this is this one is our required event, and we are willing to compute probability of this required event. Okay. We have already expressed event. And we we are willing to compute probability of this event, this joint occurrence of A1, A2, A3. Now here probability of computing A1, A2, A3 much simpler. How situation will come here? So A1 is talking about the event that first non-defective chosen unit. That first what we have chosen. And so how many non-defective uh, unit are there? 95. Out of 100, 95. So what is the probability of A1? It is 95 by 100. Now, once you have chosen one non-defective unit, you will go to select second non-defective unit. So what is the probability of A2 given A1? That out of 95, you have already selected one, 94. Out of total 100, you have selected one, so 99. So what is the probability of A2 given A1? 94 by 99. And likewise, what is the probability of A3 given a1 and a2 it would be 93 3 by 98 so it is much, simp much simpler approach if you are applying multiplication rule so what is the probability of a intersection uh, a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 joint occurrence so we will apply here just multiplication rule. and through this we will easily get the solution of this problem very simple later another uh, this one is much uh, difficult call okay again you can solve it by multiplication rule the question is coming that a class consisting of post graduate, uh, four graduate student and twelve undergraduate student. All BTEC means what? Where where there is a bachelor word happens to be undergraduate uh, studies. So you all are UG student. Who are graduated? Graduate student. Those who are in master or PhD, they will consider as a graduate uh, student. Okay. So. A class consists of four graduate and twelve undergraduate uh, uh, students, and uh, so a class cons is uh, randomly divided into four group. Each group contains four uh, students. Four. So how many four uh, students? Four graduate and twelve undergraduate. So you have to compute what is the probability that each group include a graduate a student. This you have to uh, solve it problem. So there are various ways to solve this problem again. So here, uh, if you talk about introduced event, so let us denote the four uh, students by four graduate student by one, two, three, four. We are giving name to them. Graduate one is graduate first student. First graduate student we will call it one, second, two, and third, three, and four. Like so, we are defining event A1. A1 is talking about a student one, graduate a student one and two are in different group a2 is talking about graduate student 1 2 and 3 are in different group a3 is talking about graduate student 1 2 3 and 4 are in different group so actually we are willing to compute probability of a3 a3 is actually intersection of a1 a2 and a3 so probability of a3 is actually equal to probability, probability of intersection of a1 a2 and a3 okay so we have to compute, so again we have to apply multiplication rule, so it is coming like this way. Simple multiplication rule might be clear. All about here main problem is that to compute probability of A1, probability of A2 given A1, probability of A3 given A1, A2. 
that we have to. So how will compute? There are various way. So here, uh, how many total students are there? 16 a student. Okay. How many groups are there? Group one. Let me make it like this. Group one. Group one contains how many element? How many student? Four. Call it group one. G one. Group two contains how many element? Uh, how many student? Four. Group 3 also contains 4 element. And, and group 4 also contains 4. Uh, okay. Now, I am asking to compute, do not go for this approach, this one is one approach, it is just based on uh, principle of counting. So I am asking to compute probability of A1, how will compute probability of A1? In the denominator how many options are there? A1 is talking about a student 1 and 2 are in different group. So here a student 1 is here, how many possibilities for a student 2 are there? How many vacant places are there for a student 2? 3. How many places are there for a student 2? If suppose a student 1 is in group 1, how many places, how many options are there for a student 2? 3. There are 12 options. In G2, how many options are there? 4. In G3, how many options are there? 4. In G4, how many options are there? 4 places are there. Na? So in total, how many options are there for uh, second student? 12 options. That second student should not come in the group of one a student, group of one. How many options group uh, a student one is having? 16 options, 16 options. And group uh, that's a student two is having how many? 12 options. So what is the probability of A1? What is the probability of A1? Twelve by Okay, sorry, group 1 will have how many options? Not 16, 15 options. Group 1, group 1 and, uh, sorry, a student will, a student 1 will, how many options it will have? Now, you are, A1 is talking about a student 1 and 2 are in different group. So, in that one, uh, a space will be taken by uh, second a student now. Second a student, it will be taken by. So uh, out of 16, the uh, you will talk about 15, 15, 15 uh, that uh, a student one will have 15 options and the, okay, 15, it is not having 16 possibilities, 15 possibilities it is having. Now you talk about two, once A1 has taken, uh, one, one has taken one place, then it is having 12, 12 options like that. So we are talking about a student 1 and 2 right now, not like others, okay. Likewise, if you talk about what is the probability of A2 given, what is the probability of A2 given A1? A2 given A1. 
what is the probability of this? So, suppose 2 is coming here, 1 is 1 has taken this place, 2 has taken this place, ok. Then for A2, how many options are there? 8 options. There are remaining 2 groups, 8. In the denominator, how many options would be there? 2 places has been taken by student 1 and 2. So, 16 minus 2 is 14. So, 8 by 14. It is not a simple kind of question. You have to be very much careful while computing all this. Now, if you come in A3, given A1 and A2. given A1 and A2. It is very difficult to write with this. I do not know my laptop. This pad is very sensitive. So, what is the probability of A2 given A1 and A2? What is, or sorry, what is the probability of A3 given A1 and A2? So, how many options if the three group has been already consumed? How many options are there for the fourth graduate student? Four places. And three places has been already taken. So, in denominator, how many it would be? Uh, 16 minus 3 is 13. So, these are the probability. Multiply this probability and get the desired probability. So, another approach that what I have solved in the slide, you can see those approaches as well. So, that one is based on principle of counting. You can go for principle of counting. Okay. Now, next uh, application I will talk about to computing total probability of an event. Total probability of an event. Okay. So, in order to compute total probability of an event, you need to talk about partition of sample space. If you are willing to total probability of an event from the various scenario, various scenario, various possible scenario, okay, all, all pos possible scenario, then you have to come up with a partition and this one is the partitioning of a sampler space also helping to uh, compute post posterior probabilities via Bayes rule. So, partitioning of sampler space is very much important in next two application of conditional probability. So, what is meaning of partition? I have already discussed partition several times. So, what is meaning of partition? If I simply uh, I am asking what is meaning of partitioning? Partitioning of interval partitioning of a set, uh, something like that. So, you come up with uh, some member of member or subset of that given set in such a way uh, there would be no common element be between those subset and the union will give back to the original set and what? Uh, so, mutually disjoint or mutually, uh, mutually disjoint and totally exhaustive. Partition means mutually disjoint and totally exhaustive. So, here situation is coming like this way. The A set of event B1, B2, B3 up to Bn in a sample space, all that means these are coming from the sample space. These are subset of sample space constructed by an uh, a statement. So, uh, these will form a partition of the sample space if these satisfy the following property. First, these are mutually disjoint. If you are taking any two different uh, Bi's, B i intersection B j would be equal to phi when i is not equal to j. Okay, that condition we call it mutually disjoint. Second condition that mutually uh, collectively exhaustive condition. That means if you take union of these B i's, it will give back to our sample space omega. So, that one is collectively exhaustive in nature. What is meaning exhaustive in nature? Means all the outcome of sample space are actually distributed in these bi's not outside in these bi's that means so if you take union of bi it will give back to omega sample space and third condition is just maintain the silence third condition is each partition member happens to be a possible partition member okay that means each bi is a non-empty uh, non event. That means, each bi is not equal to 5. 
what does it mean if vi is not equal to phi means it contains some outcome what does it mean that means it, its probability is greater than 0 and less than 1 probability is greater than 0 less than so i am taking here probability less than greater than 0 okay so that means each bi is a simply you can say that it is it, it is a possible event it is a possible event simply i would like to say that so these bi in together we call it uh, this bi in together we call it it form a partition of the sample of space so we and if you are saying that uh, we are having partition of a sample of space then it will be given by question or from the question itself we will direct to see the partitioning thing question itself now once we are having partition of a sample of space that also introduce partition of an given event how so it, uh, a partition of sample of space omega that also leads to uh, construct a partition of a given event how so we know that through picture it will be much clear uh, this simple uh, we are taking omega omega is having partition into these three b1 b2 b3 we have partition into three part partition then we can say that there is no common element between b1 and b2 b2 and b3 b1 and b3 so this is meaning of partitioning that's we are separating it if you talk about india uh, pre-independent then uh, uh, post independent india india has been partitioned into three country uh, initially two uh, two uh, country then three it becomes three so clearly you can't talk about overlap of population between two country there simply if someone is going to border definitely uh, some firing or something like that. Uh, no one can ally, ally there in the border if you are on the border so that is situation but com complete partition is there okay so that is the situation now within the sample of space you if you come up with a event a within the sample of space come up with an event a right like you talk about uh, gt road grand truck road have you heard or not from where it was started grand truck road what was the uh, what was the initial point or final point or uh, so you can talk about uh, from anywhere in the pre-independent time the grand trunk road from where to where it was running it was running from dhaka to peshawar where is peshawar don't know it is in, definitely in pakistan uh, far away okay so if you talk about uh, gt road as one event kind of things one event kind of things and if you try to talk from the present scenario because the country has been partitioned into three parts uh, so present scenario then dhaka to border area of india bangladesh that would be one part so you call it uh, uh, this uh, uh, this call it uh, b1 call it pakistan b2 call it india and b3 call it bangladesh something like that okay and uh, uh, gt road this a is called gt road so gt road is running from dhaka to peshawar what you will observe that so this much portion it is in bangladesh this much portion it is in india this much portion it is in pakistan okay so if you are taking an event of in the sample of space the partitioning of sample of space also leads to define partitioning of an event partitioning of an event so it is also defining so what would be name of those partition it would be a intersection bi's if bi's are partition of sample of space omega bi is a partition of sample of space omega then what are the partition of uh, a partition of a would be a intersection bi 
A intersection B i. That means we are just talk, talking partition from the perspective of given event A. And i varies from 1 to n. So like here, A1 is what? A1 is talking about A intersection B1. What is A2? It is talking about A intersection B2. And A3 is talking about A intersection B3. Okay, so I think partitioning of sample space leads to part partitioning of event. It might be clear to everyone. Okay, if it is not clear, then recall the GT road from Dhaka to Peshawar. Okay, so now second application of conditional probability will talk about uh, that computing total probability. It is coming here. Okay, tell me. Anyone know everything about uh, Subhash Chandra Bose? Do you know or not? So, uh, from which state uh, that uh, English people couldn't identify, uh, couldn't trace the uh, disappearance of, uh, appearance of uh, Subhash Chandra Bose? What was Gomo? So, another name is Subhash Chandra, Subhash Chandra Bose uh, Jackson. Also, name Gomo. That's why Gomo word came here, and he went directly to Peshawar. Okay, from Gomo to Peshawar. So, actually, uh, historically, all these are related. If you're trying to bring, so uh, actually, total probability. If you talk about how compute total probability, so total probability of an event. So, uh, most of application of conditional probability. That means. Uh, uh, first, we have discussed about uh, 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 multiplication rule. That one is not dealing with uh, partition, but total probability and Bayes rule dealing with partition. So most of application of conditional probability it deal with partition of sample space. So here BI is a partition of a sample space. That means when we say that these are the uh, uh, these are forming a partition of sample space, by default it satisfy these three condi condition mutually disjoint and totally exhaustive and third one is possible event bi must be a possible event so understood it would be, it would be okay so if that is the situation and if you are willing to compute probability of an event from the partitioning situation of omega then how you will say that probability of a equal to what you will write probability of a intersection phi uh, omega what is a intersection omega it is a a is within omega now so a intersection omega is a so here uh, what we have written uh, omega we have written it like this way omega is having a partition bi so that means omega is actually union of these bi we will write omega in term of second property totally exhaustive nature this this property we call this property totally exhaustive nature that means omega is actually union of these bi n number of bi okay so probability of a intersection omega is equal to probability of a intersection union of b i j and uh, how many of you know de moivre's law of set theory and various properties of set theory that with respect to so here just you have to apply it here so intersection and union so you have to apply it here so it will be what a a intersection b1 union A intersection B2, union it will go like that, A intersection BI, it will go like that, okay, okay. And what you observe that, do you observe any common thing between A intersection B1 and A intersection B2? Because you had already seen this scenario, this one is your omega, okay, and you have partition omega into N segment, call it B1, B2, observe things here and last one is 
B n. So, this call it B 1, this is B 2, this one is B n. Okay. In the sample space omega, what you are having? You are having an event A, call it A, this event A. So, what is this one? This one is A intersection B1. What is this one? A intersection B2. Do you observe any common outcome between A intersection B1 and A intersection B2? Do you observe any common element? No, or co common outcome and this segment would be A intersection B n. Okay. You don't observe any common element between these A intersection B i's. Don't observe. So you will simply apply third property of probability measure addition rule apply. So, this probability is equal to probability of A intersection B i, i varies from 1 to n. So, we are writing it like this way. Okay. Next, just we have finished multiplication rule. So, can we decompose this, multi uh, can we apply here multiplication rule? Here, which one we have observed first, A or B i? B i we have observed first. Okay. So, we will convert it into probability of bi into probability of a given pi i varies from 1 to <coughs> summation of this one so this we call it law of total probability that means first we come come up with various possible scenario in the sepala space from that scenario we are computing probability of a from those each scenario and we are summing it up in order to get probability of a this we call it law of total probability we are totaling totaling the probability of A from the various scenario. This we call it law of total probability. It is very helpful in various scenarios. Later also uh, you, you will see in uh, probability distribution as well. So, one example here we are taking manufacturing factory. So, three machines makes part at a factory. If you talk, talk about factory, the automobiles factory like for bike, it is not like that one machine will produce every equipment of the bike. One machine is uh, producing nut and bolt, another one is uh, uh, producing uh, wheel and other kind of things, handle and various other things. So, different different machines are there in a factory in order to pr produce all the possible equipment of an uh, automobile, various machines are there. So, like that scenario. So, three machines makes part of a, a part at a factory and suppose we know the, the following man manufacturing following about manufacturing process that machine one makes 60 percent of the part. If you see bike, how many nut bolts are coming? In the bike, mostly it is nut bolts. If you try to see various things, uh, very component. So, like that 60 percent of the parts coming from machine one. So, what is probability of M1? That one is 0.6. Then machine two makes 30 percent of the part. That probability of M2 is 0.3. Machine 3 makes 10 percent of the part, okay, then probability of M3 is 0.1. Now, of the part M that machine 1 produce, 7 percent are defective. The probability of D given M1 is 0.07, 7 percent are defective. So, how much that machine 1 is producing uh, in that 7 percent are defective, 90 percent are uh, properly working. Okay, of the part M2 makes 15 percent are defective, that is probability of D given M2 is 0.15. Of the part M3 makes uh, 30 percent are defective, that means probability of D given M3 is 0 0.30. So, uh, you have been asked what is the probability of, uh, of defective product, defective uh, items you have to compute. So, so sample space if you talk about uh, this complete event. Uh, this one is the factory that three machines are produced. So, you call it, you divide it into 
this part are produced by machine 1 call it m1 here uh, this part are produced by machine 2 call it m2 uh, this part are produced by machine 3 call it m3 and this one is a sample space okay in the sample space we are looking for defective product okay defective product it is also produced by m1 m2 and m3 okay so th that property is al also given here property of d given m1 is given here so we are interested to compute property of d so here we have to apply multiple uh, total law of total property that means we have to compute it uh, probab uh, probability of d intersection mi i varies from 1 to 3 d intersection mi i varies from 1 to 3 and we have to sum it up we have to sum it up from i equal to 1 to 3 okay so that's why we are having three components this this one is with respect to first partition this one with respect to second partition this one is with respect to third partition okay and all the numeric are given here and just sum it up the probability is how much it is 0.117 this is the way to compute total probability this is total 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 defective product produced by this factory the, here that means we are applying total law of total probability now another problem is here chase tournament so suppose you enter a chase tournament where your probability of winning a game is 0.3 against half of the player the half of the player you call it type 1 player okay then you are having probability of winning 0.4 against quarter of the player we call them type 2 player then you are having probability of winning 0.5 against the remaining quarter player so we call them type 3 player so you play a game against a randomly chosen opponent you have to compute what is the probability of winning so what is happening that you are having a sample of space that one is containing your opponent you have divided the sample of space into three parts type 1 type 2 and type 3 type 1 and type 2 type 3 and winning probability with respect to each part is given to you you have to compute the total probability of winning double call it so same thing here you can see there so uh, call it this partition is call it b1 what is the probability of b1 50 percent 0.5 probability of b2 is quarter quarter means 1 by 4 20 uh, 25 percent that means 2 point 0.25 and next uh, 25 it is in type 3 call it b3 so probability of b3 is 0 0.25 so all these given scenario from the question you come up with partition of the op opponent and you are willing to compute probability of winning okay further information is given to you what is the probability of winning against type 1 player it is 0.3 that probability of if you suppose you call it w in place of w call it a okay i have actually i had defined a given b now so that's why a notation i have so a is probability of winning a is probability of winning a is winning okay so probability of a given b1 is 0.3 Probability of A given B2 is 0.4. Probability of A given B3 is 0.5. So all these are given in the question. So just you have to apply law of total probability. What is the probability of A? Probability of A intersection B1 plus probability of A intersection B2 plus probability of A intersection B3. And compute all these and this is the desired probability. This is the way to compute total probability. Okay total probability of winning do we have time no okay 
so in next class we will cover beige rule beige rule is really interesting just you need to uh, know a little bit again it is you can say that it is real statement of definition of conditional probability just one hint i will give it here what is the definition of conditional probability you write it a given b equal to how much a is happening within b that means joint occurrence of a and b divided by or yeah, normalized by i am using better word normalized normalized by probability of b okay someone will say that suppose i have already observed a first someone will say that i have already observed a first so from that scenario what would be this if you have already observed a first so here you will apply uh, that multiplication rule here it would be probability of i am saying a you have observed first that means prior information some prior information. so probability of a intersection b it would be probability of a into probability of b probability of b given a divided by probability of a uh, divided by probability of b okay this is the situation so this we call it beige rule this one is the prior probability this one is posterior probability uh, take a notebook and paste and uh, two signatures all over for that would be a do it fast